We will begin by modeling the eyes. For that, we are going to use the default cube, but delete all its vertices in edit mode. Shift X and delete. Then we'll add a circle and press F6 to edit the properties of this last operation. The amount of vertices will be 12, which is a good number, and align to view. It was the front ortho view, the, the one we're working on. Then we'll add a mirror modifier, so we only have to model half of it. We will now rotate this to the side, and for that we're going to hit R twice, so it will execute a trackbar rotation based on the center of the selection. Now let's extrude this shape to the inside by hitting E and then S, moving the mouse to the center. Keep in mind that really Blender cares where the position of the cursor is. If it's close to the center of the selection, then the transformation will be much more stronger. If your mouse is far away from the center of the selection, the transformation will be subtle. Just did another extrusion to the inside, and now we will make the bridge between the eyes. Just E to extrude and then move to the center. So you can see they overlap because we didn't enable the clipping option in the mirror modifier. This makes it so the mesh doesn't go through the other side of the mirror. Let's continue with the nose. I select that loop by holding ALT and right click on an edge. Then extrude with E and start making sort of the nose shape of this character. For that little cut at the end, I use the loop cut tool, which is Ctrl R, the shortcut for it. And we will use it again, but for now that uh, for now, you can see that it makes a little pink line along a loop, and you can just hit left click to accept that. I'm going to extrude this part of the nose. First, let's shape it a bit better. And the nose was very, very tricky, and I made it a couple of times before actually making it right now here. I know it's cheating, but I want to show you the cleanest way to for making it. So I made the hole for the nose basically, then extrude it in, so I have a nice loop there. Then I uh, continue joining the top part with the bottom part by making faces with F key, selecting four vertices and F to make a, a new shape, a new face. Then cutting with Control R, I'm not using any new tool right now. You can see on the bottom left, all the keys. I press, then I need more vertices over there, so I'm going to add with Control R using the loop cut tool. Then what I'm trying to do now is just a way to keep, to make uh, the, the nostril and to keep that part clean. So maybe that's okay. Then F to make a face, and then I just keep extruding to the inside. But the most important was to have the shape of the, the nose well. I just added a subdivision surface modifier that basically it subdivides the faces and smooth the interpolation between them. So you have a much better and soft uh, mesh. But as you can see, in parts where you don't have enough vertices, it makes it too smooth. Almost every modifier has four little buttons in the header of each one. The first one being to enable or disable the visibility of this modifier on render. The second one is to enable or disable it in the 3D view. The third one is for editing, if you want to see it in edit mode or not, but it will still be visible in object mode. And the fourth one is the cage. So you basically see the uh, actual position of the vertices after the transformation of this modifier. Modeling with that cage enabled is not recommended because you don't actually edit the, the actual position of the vertices and it is not really um, comfortable. This modifier subdivides the meshes and makes it more smooth, but you lose these hard edges sometimes. So if you want to add that back, the best way is to just subdivide that part or just add a new loop cut. 
the more vertices you have, the more defined your mesh will be. That box selection is made by Control B. You hit Control B and then just draw a box. That will be your selection. If you accept that selection with left click, then it will select the vertices down there. But if you do it with middle mouse button instead of left click, it will deselect whatever is inside that box. Sometimes it's nice to hide some vertices so you can see the mesh without them, how it would be. So just select them and hit H to hide and Alt H to unhide. You can see now why it was a good thing that we had that loop over there. Because that way I can just hit Ctrl R to make a new loop cut like I just did and add more detail whatever I need it. And the detail will stay in that part. It will not go to the rest of the head or the body. That's a great thing. Before spending more time in the nose, let's move down to the mouth. So I selected that loop with holding Alt and right click, then extrude and hold middle mouse button and draw a line down. That will constrain it to the vertical axis, which is in this case Z or Z. If you do it in other directions, like horizontal, it will constrain it to the other axis, which in this case is Y. Now I just close the bottom part by extruding from the side to the center of the mesh. And in the back I had four vertices, so I can make a face. But in the front I have five vertices, so I will need a loop cut there. But actually, if you think of it, that part it will be the neck, so I don't need that. I just deleted that vertice and all the detail I need will be actually under the mouth and then I can add a loop cut so I can have the same amount of vertices in the front part of the face and the bottom part of the mouth because I don't care uh, on the neck part I will actually need vertices later on so it's just a matter of tweaking and I'm just extruding Just keep using extrude and tweaking the shape of my character. Let's add more detail to the mouth. Just control R again to add a loop cut because we have a nice loop over there. Yes, that will be the bottom part of the mouth. And you can already see where this is going. Basically, I'm opening up what it would be the mouth. And let's use a new tool over here. Let's cut this part. I could do it with Control R, but that will make vertices all over the back of the face. I don't need that. I only want detail in the mouth. So we're going to use a new tool called Knife. It's pretty simple to use. You just hit K and then draw the figure you want to cut. So something like that. So we can make the, the mouth shape. And as you can see, Blender can cut and create faces of any number of polygons. But for example, this big one here, that's actually a face. But we don't really want something like that because it doesn't work that well for animation. So what we are going to do is fix this and convert it to quads. How do we do that? We can do it manually by uh, selecting two vertices and hitting J. J will create a new, will create a link between these two vertices and split the faces. So now we have a nice loop over there. Let's check out the shape. Now we want to remove that part. Edge selection mode, control tab to switch the selection modes. I need to fix that here in the front. It seems when I did the cut, it didn't, uh, didn't cut this part, so it's easy to fix. Just remove that edge and extrude and then make a face on the holes. Selecting the vertices and hitting F. So to select that ring, you could do it manually, but there is a shortcut for that. It's control alt right click on the edge and it will select all the edges in that edge ring. Then it was just a matter of deselecting the other ones. With uh, I did it in this case with the 
circle selection, which is C, and then just remove the edges. And since we have this nice loop over there, we can fix the vertices a little bit, move them around, and add a loop so we can have more definition in the lips area. So Control R to add a loop. And then uh, I will scale it, but not scale it with S. I will scale it with Alt S, which is the tool Shrink Flatten. It's really nice. It's like scaling, but instead of scaling uh, from the center of the selection, it will do it along the normal of each uh, face, in this case, in this case, a vertice, because that's what we have selected. So it's, it's really handy. Because, for example, if you're facing a uh, vertex, it will scale it in its own direction, which is called the normal. Here, I needed to add more detail below the nose. So I could just cut with lap cut, but it will go all the way to the top of the head. So I just remove the inner part of the nostrils so I can loop cut over there and just have detail where I need it without worrying about the rest. So a bit of tweaking, and then I can close the nostril again. There is no actual need of that, but it's nice to keep it close. So since I have eight vertices, it's nice to close it. So since there was a face before there, there were four vertices. If I did one cut, it will I would wouldn't have uh, an even amount of vertices to make faces later. So that's why I did two. Some more tweaking. And when you want to tweak a big amount of vertices or when they are too close together, you can enable the proportional editing tool from the header or just hitting O. Now, every time you use transform, like rotation, grab, or scale, you will notice that there is a little circle around your selection. That means that the whatever is inside that circle, it will be affected by the transformation you make. You can change the size of that circle by uh, hitting plus or minus, or you can just uh, scroll wheel. Now let's smooth the surface so we can see a, a better shading on our mesh. This option is under the W menu called Specials, but there are two options, Smooth and Shade Smooth. The Smooth option smooth actually the position of the vertices. We don't want that. We want the uh, shade smooth. By default, when you add a circle and you extrude, the normals are not pointing to uh, the same side. So y we have to fix this manually. This is why we see all these black things here. We fix this by just uh, recalculating the normals by hitting uh, Control N in edit mode. Or you can do it also from the T, the toolbar panel, in the left side. So checking a bit more the eye socket, I want to add a placeholder sphere over there so I don't deform this too much because there will be an eye there. So since new objects are added on the position of our cursor, let's put it there. Select uh, the ring of the eye and then mesh snap cursor to select it. Or you can also do shift S. Then the cursor is positioned on the selection. That's great. Then we could add a new mesh, and we could do it actually in object mode, but then this new object wouldn't have any modifier, and you have to add it manually. So it's faster if we actually add it inside edit mode of our old mesh, because it already keeps everything. And now we separate that into a, um, a separate mesh. So first, let's tweak the amount of vertices. It's not that detail. That's okay. Align to view. We could just rotate it, it's the same. Scale it down a little bit to make it fit. Perfect. 
And now let's separate it to another object so it doesn't bother when we are modeling. You press P and then separate selection. And shade smooth. And we could just leave it like that, but we can also use a, another feature to uh, fake this shape of the like the iris in our mesh. So you could just select those vertices and extrude. Or we can also learn a new tool, which is called RIP. You select those vertices and then hit V. That will RIP the uh, vertices selected and it will create like two separate islands. Now our mesh is not together anymore and you can see it in the shading. Which is a great tool. If we want to put them together again, you can just remove doubles because the vertices are always uh, on top of each other. Remove doubles is inside the W menu. Remove doubles. Now let's close the mouth. This shouldn't be any hard. We already seen most of the tools. We are just going to implement a new one as an alternative. So first, let's extrude that part only so we keep the the part that actually joins the, the bottom and the top and because we need more vertices there and I'm going to show you now how to do it this thing I'm doing now is Alt B is the it clips the border it clips the view actually to a border that you can draw so that way you're not cutting your actual uh, your actual model but you're just the, just the view so it, it's easier to model that way to so disable just hit the same Alt B so, in the bottom was pretty easy to do. I just added a new cut so I can have more vertices close to the lips. And here, for example, I could just extrude to the inside and then make that missing face. And then I already have a nice loop that goes all around the lips. Yeah, that would be the faster way to do it. Why? Because if I didn't extrude and I just joined the inner part of the mouse, the mouth and she there. If I just join that, I will have one uh, pole there, one vertice that shares many. Then, if I did it the other way around, I will have a triangle there, and that is not uh, really good. So what we do is just extruding that missing bit, and then we have a nice quad on the bottom, and a nice loop around the lips, which is really important too to keep that. On the top, though, it's different. We have many more ver vertices and on, the, on the front, because we added more detail, of course. But on the inside part of the mouth, we don't have that many, actually. I could just do the same and try extruding. Yes, and I can get rid of some of, some of them, but not all of them. So how am I going to do that? I could add detail, but yeah, of course, if I add detail, it would go all around the the body. And we don't want that because we will end up with many vertices that we don't need. So we're going to add detail only inside the upper side of the mouth. How? We could add, for example, if we need more vertices at the bottom, we could just like use the knife tool like we did before, cutting that face using the knife, K. Okay. But no, we're going to use another tool which it does uh, something similar. It is called inset. We're going to uh, use this new inset which is something, something like uh, extruding to the inside, so to speak, but it's much easier. The, ho the shortcut is I, and let's do it without the cage. Okay, so you hit E, and then you can like select how much you want. Of course, this is not what we want. So just leave it there. And now in the F6 panel or in the uh, last property, you can click boundary. So now the inset will only happen on the boundaries and it won't happen on, the, um, on all the edges. And that is what we need actually. So as you can see now, we have extra vertices and we can join them. 
So here, uh, yeah, I could add that because we are actually missing vertices there to make it nicer. So here is just a matter of, um, oops, that not, just a matter of keep making faces. So here I still have like three on the one side and then two on the bottom. That is not good. And let's try the same technique again. We need one extra vertex, so we're going to use inset again on that side to add more vertices. So just select the faces, press I, and it will preserve the settings of the last time we used it. So it wouldn't, it would have uh, boundaries disabled, so it would work properly for our, our needs. Just create the faces missing with F, and that's it. And now we have all the detail on the front and no detail in the back because we don't really need that. And it's the inner side of the mouth, so it's not that it needs a lot of um, elegant polygons, you know, unless you make a short movie or whatever featuring the inside part of the mouth. So this was the very basics. I hope you liked it. Uh, we are going to model the rest of the body using some of these and new tools.